Bethesda, Maryland AP, the wealthy stock trader took elaborate steps to conceal the network of tunnels beneath his house in this Washington, D.C., suburb. Even the young man helping him dig them didn't know where they were. A year ago, a deadly fire exposed Daniel Beckwith's curious campaign to build an underground bunker for protection from a nuclear attack. Neighbors knew nothing about the tunnels before they heard Beckwith's screams and saw smoke pouring from the house where 21-year-old Askia Kafra Askia Kafru, died that afternoon. Maryland prosecutors portray Beckwith, a 27-year-old millionaire, as a paranoid computer hacker who recklessly endangered Kafra's life. In May, they secured Beckwith's indictment on charges of second-degree murder and involuntary manslaughter. Beckwith's lawyer calls Kafra's death a tragic accident, not a crime. Dunn's attorney Robert Bonsub concedes Beckwith is an unusual guy, but says his client risked his own life in a failed attempt to rescue Kafra. Beckwith was freed on bond after his May arrest. His trial is scheduled for April 2019. Monday marks the anniversary of the September 10, 2017, fire. It's a day that Kafra's parents are dreading. During a recent interview with their Silver Spring, Maryland, home, Dia Kafra, 69, said he and his wife, Claudia, tried to persuade Askia to stay away from Beckwith's tunnels. Their son met Beckwood online and agreed to help him dig the tunnels in exchange for Beckwith's investments in an internet company Askia was launching. I always feared something dangerous would happen to him, the elder Kafra said. Investigators found the younger Kafra's charred body in the basement of Beckwith's Bethesda home. A hole in the concrete basement floor led to a shaft that dropped down 20 feet 6 meters in two tunnels that branched out roughly 200 feet 60 meters in length. A police report says Beckwith told investigators how he tried to preserve his project's secrecy when he brought Kafra there. Beckwith said he would rent a car, pick Kafra up and drive him to Manassas, Virginia, where he had the younger man don blackout glasses before driving him around for about an hour. Kafra spent days at a time working, eating and sleeping in the tunnels. He had his cell phone with him, but Beckwith used internet spoofing to make it appear he was in Virginia, according to Montgomery County Prosecutor Douglas Wink. These are the lengths the defendant went through in order to hide the truth from Askia Kafra as to where he was in to maintain the secrecy of these tunnels, Wink said during a May 31st hearing. Beckwit lived alone in extreme hoarder conditions, forcing the men to navigate a maze of junk and trash, Wink said. The tunnels had lights, an air circulation system and a heater powered by a haphazard daisy chain of power strips that created a fire risk, the prosecutor said. Hours before the fire, Kafra texted Beckwit to warn him it smelled like smoke in the tunnels. Beckwit flipped a breaker that turned off lights in the tunnels but turned the power back on after Kafra said he couldn't see, Wink said. Beckwit ignored those obvious signs of danger, the prosecutor told the judge. Wink said Beckwith had a paranoid fixation on a possible nuclear attack by North Korea. Beckwith's lawyer compared his client's concern to the days of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Bonsub said Kafra posted photos of himself in the tunnels on social media, suggesting he was proud of the work. He kept coming back, Bonsub said. Beckwith's lawyer described him as a successful day trader who has made millions trading stocks. Dia Kafra said his son was impressed by Beckwith's wealth. I think Askia was very trusting, he said. He believed in the guy. Dia Kafra said he only met Beckwith once, when he dropped off his son at their home. He seemed shy. He said he made his money off bitcoins, Kafra recalled. Beckwith lived with his parents at the Bethesda house until college. He enrolled at the University of Illinois, where campus police arrested him in 2013 on charges including computer fraud. He was suspected of installing keystroke logging devices on the Urbana school's computers. He pleaded guilty and was sentenced to two years of probation, according to online court records. The conviction didn't steer Beckwith away from computers after he moved back to Maryland. 
In 2016, he spoke at a hacker convention using the alias 3 Alarm Lamp Scooter and wearing a fire-resistant suit and visor that obscured his face. Wink said Beckwith was teaching his audience how to make thermite bombs to destroy computer data. In order to get away with hacking, Bonsib said his client's use of a pseudonym and disguise was harmless, typical of the weird things people do on the internet. County officials sued Beckwith over his property's condition, calling it unsafe and a public nuisance. Wooden boards now cover the doors and windows of the house, which is surrounded by a chain-link fence and police tape. Meanwhile, Coffer's parents haven't touched their son's bedroom. The urn holding his ashes remains inside a cardboard box. We haven't had the courage to open that box, Dia Coffer said. Close the biggest headlines, delivered to your inbox, get news as it happens. Sign up for Boston.com's email news alerts. Thanks for signing up.